After a few inspections, a few weeks, and a few different trials and error, I think I figured out that my worst fear has come true. My bees actually did swarm. So we're gonna take a look into one of the hives and then I'm gonna talk about that and show you exactly what happened. Orange hive, and it's been doing pretty good. So I just wanna check on it and make sure it doesn't need any food and show you what we've got going on here. So this is the feeder. And what we did is I actually came out here and put another brood box on last week. So I'm just here really to check and see about food. And then how much they've built these combs out, if they have at all. So I'm not really going to do a whole lot because usually... From what I understand, they don't go build from here out. They start in the middle, generally speaking. And I don't really expect a whole lot. Well, they're building. That's a beautiful thing. You can see right here, they're starting to build. So we're not even gonna mess with this box. See what we can get going on here. And then I'm just gonna pull one frame and just check and see what's going on in here. Nothing crazy, nothing insane. So they are cleaning out the cells and I don't know if you can see it, but like all in here, there's larva. So that means that there are at least five day old eggs in here. So the queen is in fact laying, which is good because we replaced this queen. And we have eggs on all of it, which is why I ended up putting the um, honey or the other brood box on because I came out here and almost every single one of these frames had either eggs, larva, or brood. And so I borderline panicked a little bit. Not totally, but just a little bit. So let's pull this one and see what we got going on here. So we've got some cat brood, we've got some larva going on here, and down at the bottom, the bumpy ones, you can even see we've got drone cells, a lot of nectar, and there's even some pollen, so there is a queen cup, Let's see if I can do this without dropping it, right here. But if we look into it, there's nothing in it. So we're not really gonna worry about that. And our queen should be good. So the orange hive is good. Now we're going to go into the blue hive and I'm actually going to do something pretty cool. It may not seem cool to you, but to me it is. We're going to add a honey super on and that's all we're going to do. So we went in here yesterday and I found my queen and I'll talk about her in a second once I get this super on. But I was talking to my mentor and we're apparently just about to go through another nectar flow for goldenrod and stuff and he was saying that there is a strong possibility that I could actually get a little bit of honey this year. 
which would be amazing. Not like a full harvest or anything, but just a little bit. So I gave them a liter of feed yesterday, one liter of one-to-one -one sugar water, and look at what's going on here. In 12 hours, they have completely drunk all of it. So that's a good sign to me that they want it. And remember, we had overfed this hive and it had been basically nectar bound. I don't want to say honey bound because it wasn't honey bound. They didn't feed it for a while so that they could kind of, you know, use up what they had. Because, you know, bees will move it to wherever they want to move it. So I wanted them to have that opportunity. So we're going to come out here and because they have to build the comb, we're just going to do something really simple and I'm just going to plop it down. Nothing major. Um, I don't want to go into the hive anymore because we totally tore it apart yesterday. But because we have about two to three weeks beforehand, before that flow actually starts, I want to go ahead and get that on there. To make it official. We're going to go ahead and put this queen excluder on. And what this does is it keeps the queen from moving up into this honey super so she won't lay eggs. Now I do believe my, hunt, my queen excluder may be a little small. I may have got the wrong one, but that's what we got. We're just gonna simply plop this super right on top. And what I did is I used plastic foundation, but I coated it with wax first so that the bees would accept it more readily. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have 10 frames. Get them nice and spaced. Give these gals something to do because we don't want them to swarm. Especially now that we have a queen that's laying in, from what I saw yesterday, she's laying very heavily, which is good. And then we're going to put our feeder back on top. And because they drank all of that in the day and they now need to build comb, we're going to add all of our feed to it that we brought out, which is just another liter. But that should get them going in the right direction. And I mean, they are filled up in here. You can see they are just looking for this nectar or this water, sugar water. So we're gonna give them something to look forward to. And hopefully they can build this comb out and we can get a decent harvest. So I'd love to take you around and walk you around, but as you can see, I'm sweaty and um, Actually, to be honest, it's starting to get a little lightheaded from the heat, so it's a hot day. But that kind of had to be done. So what happened with the blue hive, and I feel kind of bad because somebody actually commented and was like, your bees swarmed, and man, we were convinced that they didn't swarm. I mean, absolutely convinced. And we went out, we looked, and I, I bought the queen, and the queen was gone. She was rejected, whatever. And so I came back, <clears throat> A couple days later to make sure that she was in fact not there and as I looked into the hive there was like no eggs no brood nothing and the bees were just kind of doing their thing so I took a frame of eggs and brood from the orange hive and I basically said hey you guys are doing really good let me borrow a little bit of your babies put them in here just to help keep that going because what the bees will do is if they need a queen they will make a queen and i mean i'm not gonna lie i spent 42 dollars on a queen i put her in and then boom she's gone so i mean i would have had more fun burning that 42 dollars in a fire pit and making myself feel special than doing that so i came back out five days later dude there was like five queen cells in there totally loaded charged capped ready to go and so he said okay let's wait two weeks so i waited two weeks and then I came back out and we went in there yesterday and my mentor at Warden's Farm uh, Beekeeping, you can check out his YouTube, YouTube channel, 
um, helped me because we were gonna find the queen. And you know, a virgin queen can be hard to find. And we looked through everything and we didn't see her. And you know, we go back and we start putting it back together. Now we had found some two day old eggs. So we knew that like, hey, she's laying somewhere in here. There's eggs, cool. We're gonna just go from there. And then the last frame we picked up, bam, I spotted her. So I actually got to mark the queen and put her back. Man, she's slick, boy. She looks like she's ready to go. But um, we found a frame in there that was full of larvae, which this is what it tells us is that in fact, she had been there for a while. So when I was looking around the first time, what had probably happened is they swarmed and then she hatched from one of the swarm cells, went out, got mated, came back. And when I had come out, it was just, we we're just kind of playing a dance. Couldn't really see her, didn't know what was going on. You know, she wasn't laying yet and I wasn't seeing anything. Not to mention, to be totally honest, I'm not really that good at finding eggs. I'm getting a lot better, but at the time, like I couldn't tell an egg from anything. So now I can start to tell one, two, and I believe a three day old egg and then larvae and stuff like that's easy. Um, that's easy from the get go. But we put her out there and then I said, well, what happened to the five queens before that were ready to go? And what had probably happened is she had hatched and then she'd went around and stung them all and killed them and took over the hive. So as a valuable lesson for me to learn here, and the lesson that I picked up is like, man, I don't know if it's worth it, like to go buy a queen and put it in there and just let nature kind of take its course. I mean, I'm brand new at this, so my opinion probably doesn't matter that much, but it just seems to me like nature took its course in that hive. And when I tried to intervene, not only did I waste my time, my money and my effort, but then like for right now, it seems like it's all kind of worked out for the better. I mean, we've got a natural queen, not like the other ones aren't natural, but like they raised the queen, she went out, she came back, she's laying heavy. And the hive, which was a weak hive, is now becoming a stronger hive when in fact, to the point to where we have a honey super on on our first year, which I did not even expect to be able to do. So, and the plan with that is to let them build out that super, fill it up with honey as much as they can. If we get a full super, I might take a frame or two of it. I don't know how much ever I'm, you know, it's suggested that I can take. I'll take that and then just leave the rest for them. I mean, I don't want to go without forever, but I definitely want to enjoy a little bit of this hard work this year. Cause I'm gonna tell you what, beekeeping is the hottest thing I've ever done in my life. And it's different than gardening where I can't just take my time and figure it out. The clock's kind of ticking for me because I've got to get them ready for winter so they can come out. So, but my two worst fears were losing a queen and having my bees swarmed and they happened within the first two months that I happened that I've had the bees and it all has worked out just fine. So maybe I shouldn't worry as much. Goodbye.